CD214 Network podcast is for mature audiences only. Any videos, music, or entertainment not originating from DD214 Network is used and covered under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976, also known as Fair Use. Opinions expressed are our own and do not represent any DOD or U.S. government entities as a whole. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. You are no longer alone now, because we have you. Good morning, everybody. Good Welcome morning. To the Good motherfucking the morning. Morning. Network podcast. Oh yeah. yeah. Another, another day, another dollar. Uh it came up it came up kind of late for you too, right? The YouTube broadcast. It came it it, it came up late and then it, it like pretty much immediately like synced. It was weird. It like it yeah. took like it took like the first, I don't know, like 30 seconds, maybe. I don't know. Like yeah, I was watching, I was like watching, that. I was like, it's like, why isn't it popping yet? And it well, it finally popped. So anywho. Uh, oh, there's Cleary. Oh, it's actually yeah, funny. Yeah, he, he, Clear was on my mind too while we were talking about our our new series that we're gonna be I coming out. I think it would be a lot of fun to have Mr. Cleary on. I do. Yeah, so I, I was do, thinking do Cleary, Bodet, Ace, and uh, Ronnie J. <laughs> our four horsemen. Yeah, basically. basically yeah, four like horsemen. The, the guys that have been there and, and kind of sticking it out for, for quite some time now, yes. Yeah, and, kind of- and I don't I don't know, I don't wanna I don't wanna uh, maybe I get a little sentimental sometimes. I don't want to. I don't want to touch anybody's like you know buttons. But I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind talking to Joe again, Joe Poe. I wouldn't mind having him back just for like an update, just to say can, hi. And can I tell you something? Like, it's seriously. actually been funny because like I know my wife still talks to him, you know, yeah. and and he he said. He, you know, he sent money to my to for my kid's birthday. And, you know, and it's funny because like our, our our buddy, our mutual friend from you, me and Lore, uh-huh. he yeah. was we I, I got taken out of the episode that we recorded because I didn't want like any. I didn't, sure. it, yeah, well, it, it, was, it was not it was not part of the conversation, but like it, we had gotten into a sidebar about him and talking about how. I forgot what the context was. We were saying something that like reminded us of him, mm-hmm. and that, yeah. and then I was and I was well, like, I was like, damn, I missed that guy. And, I, and dude, when I when I when I was listening to that after dark, I told you about uh, when we were talking before before we before we went live. Um, he's on there, and it's and it's like yeah, all of us shooting the shit, and it's like it's like it was but it was just yeah. yeah. What do you, no, what do you yeah, what, it was. What, what, what do you want me to say? I miss the guy. Okay. There's something. There's I'm something. Even the Godfather has feelings. Okay. There's something. There's something in the ether, because yeah. like you know, there's something in the ether happening. I haven't spoken to him. I mean, even on BRVG, his essence was there too, as he helped create that show too. Absolutely. Uh, and it's mm-hmm. it's like you know that there's something. There's He's something. A good dude. He's a good yeah. dude. He's like, a good was, dude. I I was I was I was kind of sad to see him go, but th- when things happen in life, sometimes we have, we have to make the decisions yeah. that. Are are yeah. most important for ourselves. Yeah, and he right? and he left, and he left before mine and his fallout too. It was yeah, right it, before, yeah. It, it, it was completely it separate. Had do, it had nothing to do with any real negativity. It was just like he he had to do stuff for himself, and that's okay. I just kind of wanted an update. I want to say hi to the motherfucker. You know what I mean? I don't. I barely talk. I barely talk to anybody. 
I'm Mr. Fucking like, you know. I know. Like, I know if he comes back, he's going to fucking roast me. And I'm all oh, here for it. He's going to roast me. That shit, he, uh, that, uh, that whole episode that I list that, that I, uh, that I, I uh, listened to of that after dark where we played, uh, where we played, uh, the hot seat, um, you know, he's all over it. He's, 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 he's all over the, he's all over the buttons and the sound effects. You know, the dude, the dude couldn't miss that night. The dude could not miss that night. He was on point. And he that really was, like, was. And that was just like, you know. We, you know, those after darks were so fun too, and that's why we want to bring them back because we want to have those conversations again. You know, agree. Yeah, hard fun. You know, it's it's going to be fun. I mean, F three, um, some we, some other people like, and this is probably like our chance to kind of open up the doors again for other podcasters who aren't military guys sure. to kind of be like, hey, this is our NXT. If you do good on here, it's kind of like, oh, you could come into our 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 main roster. You know what I right. mean? Sure. And and kind of you know I, it sounds weird saying this, but it's kind of like you have like our four horsemen who are like great leads for us, you know, I, who've always have been. I think it 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 was a good idea that you that you pitched uh, last week or or two weeks ago about kind of ver- slightly reverting back to more of a we need more guests. We need there's no, there's nothing wrong with it just being the three of us. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that, but. The whole the 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 the, gen, the genesis of the of this podcast, the genesis of DD two fourteen was, we're a bunch of fucking crazy vets just hanging out, just hanging out, like in, in what in whatever form that is. So we we probably should start investing in guests more, right? And talk and talking to you guys. Yeah, yeah, and wow. that's so yeah. Anywho, anywho, fucking how was uh, how was your guys' week, Joe John? How was your week? Very tame, very tame. Um, I think tonight me and my wife are going to watch Horizon. What's that? The Kevin Cosner movie. It's on rental right now, so we're definitely going to watch that. Oh, but yeah. The, yeah, well, the yeah. movie made the movie made eleven million dollars in the box office. It's not doing good. It's not doing good. Ooh, that's like, so, ooh. yeah, it's bad. Yeah, 11, it's it's eleven. Uh, that, this was last week. It's probably like maybe a little. Yeah, it's bad. Oh, the that's movies like, that's and, and, bad. That's like and the, and the reviews. The reviews are good, you know. But they're saying it's like so. You know how like because there's going to be four of them, and you know usually the first one is usually either the best one or the most boring one. It's just I guess I don't. It's a. I mean, it's a. We're gonna see. I'm gonna watch the movie tonight. We're gonna see. Okay. We're gonna see what it's like. I'll get. I'll, I'll, I want to hear about that next week. You know, and I uh, definitely want to hear yeah, but I was reading that Kevin Cosner made a deal with the streaming services to help, you know, bring this movie to more eyes because it's not doing good in theaters. People don't, people are not going to the theater. So I'm going to watch that tonight. Other than that, this week, I missed the boys. I have to watch the boys, but uh, Big Brother started. I'm, I'm in it to win it. It's kind tell of crazy. You, tell me how your podcast went with your old lady. Uh, talking what? about your uh, fucking trash reality shows and shit. Yeah, so my yeah. wife and I, we finally worked on a podcast together for after years of talking about it, and okay. we did it for, you know, we're starting off with Big Brother. You know, I could actually have the feeds on right now. Okay. And I, and I got it blurred out because I don't know how CBS is going to be. Um, yeah, we've we've been we've been taking yeah. out a couple times. We don't need to fuck with yeah. that. Yeah, uh, but it actually, I'm actually super excited this year because they actually completely changed the show. And the game, so it's all unexpected things that we would expect from the last couple of years, but it's not. Uh-huh. Okay. So it's actually a super. It's actually a very exciting season for one. Um, there's a marine, a young marine veteran in there named Cedric. He's 21 years old. Um, lat- he latches on to the to the older people for you know. I guess he needs. I guess he's like a mama's boy. But yeah. we have a great cast. A great group of people, not one that I'm looking at. I'm just like, wow, this person's gonna cause trouble, you know? Because the one person that we, you know, we're just waiting caused trouble yesterday morning and caused a shit show in the house. Has there ever been a season of Big Brother where like everybody's just nice? No. They don't. There do was that a, there was a se- there was a season where someone uh, put a knife in someone's neck. In that was like in like practically like physically like. Physically, yeah. like- Physically, like he was threatening to do something to her, and they kicked him out the house. That was season two. Oh damn, that's, that's intense. Yeah, that's a little um, intense. 
So I mean this I mean the 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 thing that happened yesterday this one lady um she's a real estate agent so I don't know what it's going to look like when she gets out of the house she went in on this one guy and started making fun of his physical features uh-huh. and you know look, everyone looks different right he just yeah. he's 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 got some big eyes nothing wrong with that you know and she was making fun of him about that and like it, it it's it sounded it what it what it looked like to me was a mother berating someone else's child because they wouldn't let them play with them or something and the way that it was just like disgusting you know so after that the guy was like sobbing for like four or five hours and i just felt bad watching them. i'm just like wow big brother really kicked it up this fucking season in five days uh but it's it's fun. Me and my wife did the podcast. It's actually fucking slamming right now, to be honest with you. I think I'm going to have to make a separate YouTube page for that uh, so that I don't kind of mix how many, it. How many, how many views do you have already? So on YouTube, we have. I don't want to I don't want to butcher this up. Hang on. Third episode's third episode's coming out tonight. Uh, first episode got thirty three views. Second episode got eighteen, dude. And it's all, on Rumble. It got forty, dude. You, <laughs> you guys always say like I'm the face of this show. That's probably why we get no fucking views. Okay, like the whole what's the, going the, on? The whole fucking like no wonder everybody fucking hates us. <laughs> mm. Like like you, you you do one show with your wife, dude. You're already like. Like tripling and like a hundred percenting like our fucking view counts over here. It's the it's the fucking <laughs> it's, 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 it's the it's, like, it's the reality TV side of it. Yeah, there, there's so many people out there that follow that shit and look for new podcasts and different interesting takes on reality TV. It's 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 all again. We're in a very niche market. Yeah, it is a very niche market, and let me see if it will show it real quick just to see what you guys can oh okay sweet so this is the actual this is different parts of the house this is one of the bedrooms mm -hmm. and you can see there's four cameras that you could choose between especially a quad cam this is one of the bedrooms yep. this is the uh this is the kit this is like the kitchen dining area that's cedric the marine that's uh that's kenny a police officer chemo the hawaiian that's the crazy that's the crazy um realtor yeah, that's the crazy real of right there. And yeah. Oh, and that girl right there. 30 seconds. Yeah. And oh yeah. And that girl in the back <laughs> over there says that uh she she what did she say that got her in trouble with everyone in the internet right now? She was like, uh, oh, I got a bit autistic for a second. I, uh, and I wouldn't make yeah. it, I wouldn't make it five fucking seconds in a situation like that. Oh, I know. I, I know. I I'd walk I'd walk in, grab a beer, fucking drink it, and walk right the fuck back out. Like I'd be, I'd be out, I'd be out fucking day one, bro. I yeah. would not be able to hack it in an environment like that. There's yeah. no fucking way, dude. Like, yeah, but um, things are good. I'm enjoying it. But um, to kind of go into a different note, I'll go into a quick gaming note. Uh, hmm. I I did something so fucking cool this week in my RP server. Okay. You guys <laughs> ever heard? You guys ever heard of the cash? Uh, the cash cab. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, in my server, I'm kind of getting to the point where I have way too much money. And I wanted to do something cool for the community. So we grabbed, we bought, a group of friends of us bought a wagon. And 12 Badass. of us were on this wagon. And we rode around the whole map doing the cash wagon. That's badass. You that's, know? Dude, that's cool. I like, see, yeah. I think that's, that's, that's good. Yeah. That's a good that's, idea. That was a good idea, John. What the it fuck, was, man? It, it was so fucking fun. I have one did, picture did, did, did you get? Did you get a good uh, uh, response from the community in, in your Oh, man. Room? They they were so happy that so, that something like this was happening. I got a pic here. We go. I got a picture right here to see like what one of the crowds look like. You're familiar with Saint Denis, right, Jay? Yes, I am. Very familiar. This I was, there, last, I was there last night. There you go. So this is me right here in the middle. Okay. Uh, that's Tex right there, the Marine. Okay. okay. And this is you know this, this this back group here were the ones that that were on the wagon, and then everyone here were doing the trivia. And dude, it was it was fun, man. We were asking questions like, um, you know, Red Dead Redemption questions, in mm -hmm. server questions, questions about certain people. Uh, we have this one thing in the server called Charlene's Milk, 
and no, the the whole story about that we don't know who Charlene is. We don't know where the milk is. We don't know where the milk comes from. It's just uh, 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 Gavin. Yeah, like ex- exactly like, like Gavin. Gavin. Like Gavin. <laughs> it's funny. I'm still trying to finish that story too. There is no, there is none. It just nobody, keeps going, right? Nobody, nobody. It goes, it goes all the way into the epilogue. No, yeah. one, has, no one has ever found Gavin. Gavin. It doesn't. I'm assuming with all with. They estimate there were up to 50, somewhere between 15 and 20 DLCs that were kind of like potentially like dropped yeah. eventually. So they, they, they left a lot of stuff open in the game. And I'm assuming so that, so that some of the, the DLCs would like transfer over as far as like, we might've, we might like one of the DLCs might've been like find Gavin. Right. Yep. And like, that might've been one of the DLCs, but anywho. Uh, um, and yeah, the last thing I have here, I want to show you guys this. <clears throat> Um, I kind of I've been looking like for different uh, veteran-owned businesses, yeah. just to kind of see what they have. And I found this. It's called Warrior Camos. Okay. It's it's like party shirts, uh, polos, and stuff. I'll start with the uh, I'll start with the with the button downs. Look at these, man. Okay. I'd fucking wear those. Yeah. Yeah, they're not they, like not they're not terribly tacky. Like, yeah. can you scroll down. Are there other options? Oh. Oh yeah, I, Jay, you look like you would wear this one right here. That one, I would. That's close to something I would. But if it does, it come in black. That more BDU pattern does it, too. Does, I mean. it come in, does it come in black? I, I can't see. <laughs> I can't see Jay wearing this one, the BDU one. Fuck no. I can't. I can see him wearing this one. I don't know. If that one was, if that one was darker in shade, if that one was like a like closer to like a, a dark gray, like a very dark gray or black, like that. Look, there's one black. Right, that there, one right there. There, there you go. I'll, I'll button my shit all the way to the top, homie. <laughs> we, in, we in this we in this piece essay all right <laughs> yeah they got i think they, they got uh, this one looks pretty cool too this time cool. i could make yeah, it, it. One. i could probably do that one i could that probably do that one. black that's nice hey, Some John, you want to be the tiger king there's that last one in that row there it is there it Guess is what motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> this is, they got some really they got some really nice digs their polos are interesting too these look like more like work shirts like golf shirts yeah those are, yeah, those are like the uh the cat like when you have to have a um uh, like a like a uh when, when you have like a a dinner with your like the people you work with and your like bosses are there yeah like that's that's the uh like uh that's the that's that's those shirts. That's totally a John thing there. Throw on, yeah. throw, on like a, throw on a pair of throw on a pair of khakis and one of these fucking yeah. like golf shirts. Now oh, this here. Oh, there I am. What's that one on the far left? That one? Yeah, there we go. I would fucking wear it. on the way. Get on the way. That's that thing is shit. beautiful. It's my shit. These, these I like this one. This one is nice. That I like the you know? I like Brad Ooh, look oh, at this one. Go. OD green, OD. OD. yeah, OD. OD. That's fucking okay. nice. The jungles of Nam. Telling you, yeah, this is some. This What's the name of nice shit. shit? What's the name of this fucking uh, outfit? Warrior War- camos. Warrior camos. Uh, I might have to update some of my fucking wardrobe. I, 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 yeah. I, I, I end up in the hey, same sure. rotation. I end up in like the yeah. same rotation of like the Make same. Make a note to visit Warrior Camo's website later. Yeah, oh. shirts. And over here military first responders discount you can actually log in and you you know you log in you put your credentials in there for uh verify pass you know and anything that you need to verify that you're a veteran or a first responder and you'll be able to get a discount code for all these products we're not affiliated um i just think that this company's fucking awesome i think their shirts looked, that looked pretty cool to me it looked all right to me yeah, yeah. i mean they they some really nice stuff, really nice stuff. But uh yeah, that's all that's all I got for the week. It was a very okay. tame week. Okay. Joe, how Joe, how was your week? Bless you, by the way. Thank you. Um <laughs> I mean typical shit, except you know, I finally quit, gave up the 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 chew. Oh, dude, you did. Tell me, dude, Joe. Tell us about that's awesome, man. I want to hear about that. I mean, it's one of those things I've been, I've tried many times since getting out of the army to quit. Um, each time's ended up failing. The This week just altogether was fucking stressful. Still dealing with bullshit at my apartment. Um, 
So, of course, I chose the worst week to start because I was just under a lot of fucking stress, but I still kicked its ass. Right. Um, started using the little on fucking nicotine pouches um, because they're like a step down system, in my opinion. And it gives me that feeling that uh, he's the only one that doesn't smoke D. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and that's man. only because of state law. If it was. Yeah. Once once they make it recreational and medical use here, it'll happen. Um, John, take that down. Thank you. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, you picked the wrong week to quit sniffing glue, huh? So, I mean, I've started using these. Um, and actually, this is the first can I opened. I bought 10 cans. Oh, and shit. I've only it's gone through great. one can in a week. There you go. I've got, I think there's one more left in here. Oh, are those, so, are those, are those kind of like my snooze? Yeah. So they're upper lip. Um, but my plan it's is. It's just a different delivery system. Yeah. My plan is start with the eight mils, yeah. go with these for a month, switch down to the next step down, which is, I think, four milligrams. And then after that's two milligrams. You're going to try so, to, complete, you're going to try to completely cessate. Yeah. Like you're, so, you're going, you're, you're about to go. I'm going to. I'm going to work. And I'm just completely cut so, it out. I so mean, the thing is. Here. Help me out here. Are there different, they're like different strengths of these, of these things? Yeah. So these are eight milligrams of nicotine per pouch. Then there's, so this company, they sell some like 0.5 ones also, but you can only get those online. Let me pull up their website and. Do you get, do you get like a sensation from taking them? I, I'm, I've never taken them before. It's not. That's what I'm trying to avoid because like the sensation usually gets me sick. No, no, not, no, it wouldn't be like that. No, no. So here's, here's the thing, like being someone that came from actually using chewing tobacco, the first time I ever dipped or used chew, I got really lightheaded because that's a lot of fucking nicotine at once going into your system. Yeah. Cause they say, uh, one pack of smoke, one can of dip is the equivalent of, I think it's like 10 packs of cigarettes. Fucking YOLO, dude, that shit got us Holy through Afghanistan, shit. homie. So, of course, oh, hey, if, you're gonna feel it, John, if you're if you're not used to that high of a delivery of nicotine into your system at once, you're yeah. going to feel something. You're going to learn today. You're going to learn today with that horse in your mouth. Levels of nicotine, you can easily just go and get the four or the two milligram, which are the two, I think, is the lowest. I'm looking at their site right now to figure it out. Um, of course. This page doesn't actually have the information I need. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just freaking, I'm proud of you. Like for, for getting off. Yeah, the fucking, that's great. Like, I, I still use Campbell snooze, but I have not, I have, I, I've, I, I do occasionally bump cigarettes, but they're very few and far between, but I have not bought a pack of cigarettes since December of 2020. Like, so I've been off cigarettes. I've been off cigarettes for like going on about three and a half years now. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Like it's it's just it's just a different d- delivery system for nicotine. Yeah, it's eight, four, and two milligrams. So you know, uh, but online they also sell three and a half and six and a half milligram pouches. But you know, Try this it. worked great. Again, you know, this is the first can I opened out of the ten I bought. From a financial perspective, once I'm fully done, that's going to be two hundred dollars a month back in my pocket. Oh yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, because I, I mean, I spend fifty. I was spending fifty dollars a week on chew, on dip, and that's you know, of, that's a lot of fucking chew, bro. Yeah, yeah. And and like that ten. K. Lot, well, dude, it, it. I mean, I, I remember when I dipped. When I dipped, it would take me somewhere between like one and three days, one and three days to go through a can. But yeah, I mean, they've got different flavors too. Like this is wintergreen. They've got mint. They've got. Do they coffee, have citrus? They've got cinnamon. Citrus they have berry. They have citrus from the dungeon. They have original, which I'm guessing is just flavorless. Mm. Yeah, it's just like just just you know what? Like just our 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 parents were right. Our parents were right. Just just don't fucking start, kids. Okay, like. St- 
Stay the fuck away from nicotine. It's bad. Yeah. It sucks. It's a it's a lifelong fucking like it, the, the hook. The hook never come. The, the hook has never come out. Yeah, you definitely don't want to go down out. that fucking route because it takes fucking forever. I mean, that I started goddamn- dipping at. I started dipping at fifteen, working in a tobacco field. I I think I I had my first cigarettes somewhere around like 13, 14. The hook went in at seventeen. I I very specifically remember yeah. that. I was seventeen when the hook went in. That was nineteen ninety eight, kids. Do the fuck, do the fuck, do your own math. Nineteen ninety eight to fucking two thousand twenty four. That's how long Jay's had the hook in him. Like yep. that's like just stay the fuck away from nicotine, kids. All right? So you know, and if, you're, and if you're a kid, you should not be watching this fucking show. You're wrong already. Like, that's so that you part. know, I'm I'm doing this. I'm fucking working on it. The old lady yesterday, she thought she'd be funny and be like, "Well, since you can last this long without that, why don't you give up alcohol?" No, 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 no. Whoa, 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 whoa. 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 I'm about to start. Uh-uh. Nah, 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 nah. Pump the fucking brakes there real quick. One goddamn vice at a time. One goddamn well, vice at a time. So, okay. So, Cleary, I'm going to I'm gonna speak on what Cleary just said, because when I went up to Massachusetts, to Boston, back in November last year, I thought I brought enough tobacco with me. And I was short. And on the last day before having to fly home, I had to find a gas station to pick up a can. And a five dollar, a four dollar and eighty seven cent can of dip here in North Carolina cost me fucking thirteen dollars. Well, no, it was it was like fifteen dollars because I got a can fuck of that. dip and a bottle of prime bro. from this gas bro, station, and it cost me almost twenty bucks. That's like a fucking pint of liquor, bro. Yeah. Like, dude, it was cheaper to get beer than it was to get my fucking nicotine. (laughs) Dude, like, so, like, you know, it's, and I'll tell you what, you know, it's bad. Like, here in Missouri, Missouri traditionally has super low tobacco prices, right? Yeah. The cheap, the cheap fucking shit out here is still five bucks a fucking pack. Yeah. The cheap, the cheap shit is like five bucks a pack. It's no, no, no cigarette on earth is worth more than about 250 a pack. That's like, no cigarette, no cigarette on earth. I have my, my I have my wife's uncles who live who live in Massachusetts. They have to go to Connecticut just to get menthol cigarettes too. Yeah, dude, we should fucking rob a cigarette truck, and we'll go fucking, and then we'll go fucking up to fucking Massachusetts, and we'll sell the menthols to all the fucking all the bo- all the all the boys in Dorchester. They do that already. I know they do that fucking, already. I'm they fucking fuck they go into <laughs> Connecticut. They buy they buy the cartons and they go back to Massachusetts and they sell them for like twenty bucks a pop. Um. So I'm gonna we'll we'll get to your comment there from the dungeon about the whole alcohol thing, but that's um I'm gonna circle back to Jay with the whole KC prices. That's like the last day, like the day we were flying out from KC back in May. You know, I needed to get a can of this for the flight because you're not allowed to use regular chew on a flight. Technically, you're not supposed to use this either, but this is concealable compared to like it's spitless. It's spitless. Yeah. Um. But I mean, a can of this in KC was the same as it is here. That's good. well, you well, you are also you're in North Carolina, probably yeah. the, the only probably the only other one of the only other states that's comparable to Missouri with how low their tobacco prices are. Tennessee, this, this shit's Tennessee's fucking grown. Lower. This shit's grown there, bro. Of course, it's going to be. I would hope it's cheap for you. I would hope well, it's cheaper for you. Tennessee's actually cheaper than North Carolina and Kansas City, so. When we go out to Tennessee to visit our buddies that live in Chattanooga, when I pick up a can of dip there, if I don't bring enough with me when we were going when, last time we went, it was two dollars and like twenty five cent cheaper in Tennessee to buy a can than it was in North Carolina. Instead of it being almost almost uh, six bucks, it was right at four dollars. So, um, but on the on for, on. D's comment here don't you have to get pills in order to come off of alcohol if you have a dependency for it you could die if you're yeah. okay if you're a fucking hardcore out with yeah if we are not we oh, okay real quick let's 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 talk let's talk about alcohol use and and alcohol misuse okay mm-hmm. here 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 on this show we do not endorse or oppose uh, what people kind of choose to do in their own individual lives. Yep. When people come, when people come to individual decisions to change certain habits that they may or may not have in their individual lives, we fully support that too. Um, 
no, <laughs> no one here on this show <laughs> is what I would call like a hard alcoholic. Uh, we might check a couple of the fucking boxes, but the fucking reality is um, alcohol is not the problem in our lives. <laughs> I could name you one guy who was like, <laughs> it's, okay. It, it's okay. When, when people have a problem and they recognize it, that's good. And I fully yeah. support that shit. I fully support it. Yeah. Whether if, if you go full blown sober or if you just decide to fucking, you know, only, only have a beer or two on the weekends, you know, if you decide to have a couple, a couple of uh, glasses of wine at the end of a, at the end of a, a work day to help you wind down and relax, mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck. It's not my, it, it's past the end of this thing right here. My nose, none of my fucking business, which what anybody does in their life, what I do in my life is my business. Right. And, and that's, mm-hmm. and that, and jamming, we support that. We support all yeah. that. Okay, I got, I can't tell you how many people I know that are are in recovery right now from alcoholism. Um, the only thing we we would ask on this show is uh, don't point fingers. Okay, don't like we we don't need any pots calling the kettle black. That's right. So because we, we 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 also have no problem holding the mirror holding the mirror right back up. Okay, so when when somebody uh, you know tries to tell yeah. us how to live. We also don't play that game, so well, you know that's why that's why like I'm I'm gonna sit here with a fucking Miller High Life on my Sunday in my church, and I'm gonna enjoy. It. J- Joe, cheers to you, brother. Cheers, and I'm gonna have my whiskey ginger. I mean, and I'm also but, and I'm also drinking for for the people out there that can't. All right, for you cheers. guys. For you, for you guys and all of your endeavors, you should really just cheers us with some fucking rubbing alcohol. I'm Dude. not going to drink it. It's all Please I got. Don't. That's dangerous. I'm not going that's to. I'm not. Da- that's I'm just, actual dangerous. That's, that's no, actually yeah. how you die from alcohol. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's full alcohol poisoning, guys. If you drink this, that's right. Don't ever drink that. That shit will not. That doesn't get you drunk. Like fucking a, fucking oh, a from the dungeon. Oh, fucking oh, a. If you're sticking around, Jay's got the Roadhouse coming up soon, so. Ooh. You know, what so you know? we have a fucking around. Around. holy shit. We actually have a new segment too. Yes, we do. Do you, do you do well I, before? Let's, yeah, finish your thing. I have a question to ask you guys, and then we'll get to that your segment tech because I really so, want to. So I mean, you know, the thing is, has it been a little rough? Yes, but with the with the with quitting so far, there's a few things I've already noticed in the several days that I've been without the actual dip um a sleeping a little bit better really a little more energized when i wake up in the morning and what what, tell me about that i want to hear about that part first the sleeping so so i sleep because i'll I'll quit i'll quit campbell snooze before i fucking quit drinking right (laughs) yeah (laughs) um so with that i'm i'm typically a really hot sleeper and i sweat really bad at night i've got Mm -hmm. you know a window unit in our bedroom and that's cranked all the way down as low as it can get. And two fans blowing right on me at night. And I still am sweating like a stuffed pig when I sleep. The past couple of days, I haven't been sweating as bad during my when I'm sleeping. Um, waking up, feeling more energized. Actually getting sleep. Um and what that's starting, to, like what I, I was saying to Jay before even John came in is I feel like maybe because I was so used to the amount of nicotine going into my system when I was asleep for, you know, eight, 10, 11 hours at night, I was going through nicotine withdrawals, which was what was causing the sweating and overheating right. and not being well, able to sleep. And if, you're, and if you dip as much as you say you were dipping. You were you were taking in a lot of nicotine, so that that actually kind of makes sense. I could see that. So, you know, that's one thing. Now it's you know, I have one of these in right now. I'll take it out at some point here shortly. Give it a couple hours, put another one in, and I've been perfectly fine with that. Like I'm, I'm noticing that. Um, I love hearing this, man. This is I'm, so positive. I'm more doing this. So there's there's medical reasons or or health reasons behind it. And sure. not just the typical that, you know, tobacco is bad. Hey, dude, hey, dude um, you're getting older. You're getting older. So you, you better start fucking paying it, paying a little bit more so, attention to it. Right. Yeah. And, and the thing is, I've got I've I have a genetic condition with the enamel on my teeth where it never formed properly. Hmm. So interesting. A dipping doesn't help with fucking that to begin with because I had fucking weak out. Damn, 
Don't even get me started on nasty mine already because I, I have a fucking similar problem with my enamel. So I have to get it comes off with get, nothing. I've been told I was told at 25 that by the time I hit 30, I needed to have all my bottom teeth pulled. Yeah. In either I, implants or dentures. I've, and I've avoided I've the told. dentist at all costs because the I've one been, thing I've I told myself is I wasn't gonna dump all that money into dental work to get that shit fixed mm-hmm. until I was off of nicotine using the tobacco yeah because we can't they have the they have that fucking they have that fucking um they what they do is they drill holes in your fucking jaw and they screw the fucking the teeth down into your fucking well that's jaw. the implants oh um, but you can't, but you, can't have any nicotine, you cannot have any nicotine fucking well, if you, you fucking, can't use chewing tobacco because it'll just fuck up those fake teeth cigarettes either they don't want you smoking they don't yeah. want you doing anything like all the, all the shit that's in fucking they don't want you smoking i've got i've got several buddies that have gotten multiple implants done on their bottom teeth and they still smoke and they haven't had issues but again roll that's the dice call. roll the dice yeah roll yeah the that's dice. that's a roll of the dice because i mean they've gotten cheaper over the years because when I, it was first talked to with me i think it was like two thousand dollars per implant per tooth i remember when i got my i got one of my wisdom teeth pulled in the army and they, you know, they tell you not to smoke. And I was like, fuck these motherfuckers, dude. Like, and I, I smoked a cigarette and I'm lucky because I didn't get dry socket. Cause I yeah. saw, I saw another soldier. Well, I saw another soldier get dry socket. That's and like that motherfucking shit looked painful. That looked painful. I got a tooth missing here. Right. I got one down here. That's already been pulled. I got one on this side, the two on the bottom and the one on the, t- the, the two on the bottom were pulled within the last five years. Um, right. And each time after about four hours after having them pulled, I put a dip in and I rolled the fucking dice. I rolled the fucking dice. I shouldn't have fucking done it Agreed. because I could have gotten dry socket, but I rolled the fucking dice because I'm a fucking grown ass man. I'm going to do what I need, what I want. Yep. We're Um, stubborn as as shit. We don't give a fuck. You know, it's, it's one of those things like we've done. So we're going to be, we just re-signed a lease at our current townhouse. We only did a six month. Um, we only did a six month because shit's you going got it done nice. Shit's going to fucking hell in a handbasket here. But next month, when our lease would have been up on the twenty fourth of August, we're going to be at the beach on a family beach trip. So trying to move and juggle a beach trip at the same time just wouldn't fucking work. Right. So I was able to get us a six month lease for the exact same we're paying now. So no increase on our rent or anything. And then February, we're moving. After we move in February, then it's going to be time to start tackling getting fucking dental work done. Right. Um, and the other one upside of that time. is one thing at a time. the wife just got offered a fucking job with the state. So my oh, yeah. dental insurance is going to be fucking great. <laughs> there it is. Fucking get, get, it, get it in while you can get it in, dude. Like I'm telling you, that's fucking... Anywho, anywho, so, anywho, yeah. Uh, you guys want to you guys want to put someone on the wall of shame today? Oh, god, Who? what do we got? Uh, you guys familiar with Boogie? Nope. Uh, Boogie 2988. <laughs> oh, you're talking about the uh YouTuber, yeah. So, not Boogie, even not even so, close. So, Boogie is scamming people, telling people he has cancer, and he's been doing this for the last two years, and he got put on a panel with a guy with Keemstar, Destiny, XQC was a part of it. These are all, like, different YouTubers, like, investig- like just different YouTubers. And they put this yeah. guy on blast uh, for claiming for him, you know, receiving money and him crying wolf about his cancer diagnosis. The one thing that we do know is that he has polycythemia vera, which is a type of blood cancer, but he has not been able to prove his claims. I don't, uh, how, I don't know how I feel about this. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's I it's feel confused. <laughs> well, I well, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that I investigated every single thing, but I can tell you that the that the few things that I did watch and the documentaries that are out there, the guy's been lying about a lot of things more than just the cancer. Um, he's a he's a chomo. What? Uh, yeah. Okay. He, Whoa. Yeah, he should have yeah. let off with that one. Should have let off with that yeah. one. 
Oh, yeah. start with the chomo. Start with the chomo. <laughs> okay, yeah, 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 yeah. In, instant hate for me. Instant yeah, I, I mean, he, he, this guy, this fucking guy, this guy talks about changing the age of cassette, which is fucking disgusting. Um, he also, he also has, he. Uh, put the someone put the the suicide hotline disclaimer up, please. Hang on, One, I got you. I got you. Yes, yeah. got it. So this so this guy, um, while he was getting fired on the air, uh, for Lolcow uh, with Keemstar, he was getting fired, and he decided to double down on his on his craziness and got naked on air and threatened to pursue self harm. Uh, live on you, live on YouTube. Okay, uh, uh, and this is not the first time he's done it either. Too. Um, the he, fuck. Yeah, he keeps. That, he sounds, keeps... that, that sounds like just a disturbed individual, and I don't. Yeah. I, don't I don't really have two ways about that to say that. It, 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 that just yeah. sounds like an individual who's very, very disturbed. Yeah, and like, and... like I don't. I'm trying to think about like a responsible way to like say the words that I want to say. So that it doesn't come off like. Too, oh, no, too... it, oh, don't worry. People are really okay. called them. The, people call them the R word already. So you don't have to it's say. Not even, it's not even that. Which R word? It's not even. No, no, no don't. <laughs> both of you stop. See both Which one? Both stop. Send it to me in a private message. <laughs> Artard. He was talking about Artard. Uh, like, you can, like, all right. Like, yeah. Don't, 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 yeah. Okay. There is something to be said for people that are are hardcore like attention seekers, okay, and mm. and that's like and when people when people seek this kind of attention, when people seek this kind of attention, it it's become like almost a fad. Yeah, yeah, and 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 it it's it's dangerous, and I'll tell you why. And it's not. Let me take this down real quick. Yeah, yeah. The fat is dangerous, and I'll tell you why. Do you remember that video where that dude was getting stupid at a convenience store, and he dropped he dropped the n word a couple of times and telling the dude to hit him? Yeah. Oh, you're talking wild. about the twisted T incident. The twisted yep. T, yeah. Yep. Let's get twisted. Okay, that shit like that is why it's dangerous. I just saw I just saw a different I, I saw a different video mm. in the same vein. Uh, this I think it was this last week, maybe very at the very latest the week before it was a tiktok and some dude two dudes were filming and this dude went up to this other dude at a fucking grocery store line and started picking up oh his shit. yeah dude, yeah and the dude was like motherfucker I, I i'm legal concealed carry like i will fucking shoot you right now put my fucking shit down yeah yeah like when you when you're attention seeking on these levels like you do not know who the fuck you're around yeah. yeah, like like well, what they're gonna do? We're all vets. We're all vets, right? So like we've met a a very wide spectrum of individuals in in and out of the army, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, some people you're around these strain these these strangers in your life that you yeah. you pass by like so many NPCs in the video games you play. They're not fucking NPCs, and some of them fucking don't play. And if you fucking seek their attention in the wrong way you're gonna find out how fast they don't fucking play that's right and that's that's why it's dangerous because you don't know who to fuck you around like stop stop the dumb shit getting like clicks and likes and views jesus christ dude like that's like some fucking wannabe celebrity shit have you yeah. seen how let, let me tell you how much the celebrities fucking respect themselves all right Look at all the fucking goddamn Botox they fucking inject into their fucking faces. They can't even look at themselves in the fucking mirror without wanting to fucking change something about themselves. Okay? And you want to emulate that shit? And you want to be like that? And you want to wear the fucking, like, the trashy clothes and have the fucking gaudy-ass, the gaudy-ass mm -hmm. houses, you know, lined with gold? Like, that shit's fucking tacky as fuck. Yeah. Let me tell you, let me tell you, the people that have had the worst taste in my life, personally... The people that have always had the worst taste are the fucking rich and the famous, dude. They have the worst fucking taste. In general, I'm not saying every single specific individual. In general, they have the worst fucking taste. Speaking fucking, of taste, actually. Their fucking food, dude, their fucking food sucks. Their goddamn furniture sucks. Okay? Their fucking decorating sucks in their houses. And it's all because they think it's something, 
right? Yeah. And it's not. And it's it's what it is is gaudy. And when you get when you, when you start attention seeking for views and clicks, for views and clicks, somebody's gonna fuck. Somebody's gonna wake you up to fucking reality that they're not an NPC. Yeah. Like now, like we're not we're not NPCs running around here, dude. Like we're actual human beings. Yep. And and like pick pick the wrong one. Pick now, the wrong yeah. one on the wrong day. Like, now, Jay, you said the word taste. Yeah. Uh, you want to talk about the taco? Yeah, let's talk. God damn this fucking. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> so look, so we're going to have Colbert say it real quick. You know, it's fun. What's fun. What's fun. What's funny is what's funny is before you played this, I just want, I want to let our, our audience in on a little secret. <laughs> you guys, you guys made me aware that this shit even existed. I was working I, at I was working at the stadium when you when you sent that text. Like I was. Oh, that's fucking stadium. great! That was like, perfect. That is timing, funny. Jay. No like, way. I was working when you guys sent that text. Like I was working at the K. Like I was there. <laughs> well, well, it, here, here, here's the taco the in question. Play the clip. That's fun. Meanwhile, the Kansas City Royals have a new ballpark food item called the Taste of K Taco which is a charred hot dog wrapped in a cheeseburger quesadilla yeah. and topped with barbecue, brisket, french fries, shredded romaine, pickled red onions, sriracha <laughs> cracker jacks, and 816 sauce. Now, I don't know exactly. Okay. You, you stopped it before the joke. Oh, the and joke is coming? Sriracha cracker jacks oh, yeah. and 816 sauce. Now, I don't know exactly what 816 sauce is, but based on those other ingredients, I assume it's embalming fluid. <laughs> Meanwhile, all right, John, that's it. That's it. Yeah, so look at this thing. What the fuck is hey, that? Hey, hey, pull pull the pull a picture that Joe sent out of the out of the gr- the group chat. It'll be bigger. Well, so they well, can see, first off, they can see what, what the fuck, so they can what see the fuck what is that? And let's talk about what your response to that was yesterday, John. I would eat it. <laughs> I said I've, I I my response was shit. Holy shit. Like, like that's fucking like, like that's that's fucking like death. death Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, Jay! What? 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 Like, oh man! So here it is. There you go. It's a little grainy. That. Sorry, but okay. Yeah, 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 it's okay. That's okay. That's it, dude. Look at that fucking thing, dude. Like, it, it, it's an abomination. It shouldn't live. Throw it off the fucking cliff, okay? Like we're we're like, oh, here we fucking go with this shit again. Everybody wants to eat it. God. It's a ballpark food. No, the fuck, it's not. No, the fuck, that is. No, no, no it's ballpark no, now. Jay, Jay, hold on. I'm going. I'm going to defend John's comment here. God damn it. It's all the ballpark foods combined into one. There it it's is. Not a ballpark food, it's especially all Cracker Jack. One. I can't, I can't. It's like you're like you're like a goddamn. If if you're ever wondering whether or not like society is collapsing, you know, like just remember that goddamn taco, okay? Like, you mean to tell you mean to tell me that last week that guy didn't ruin the country? It's the taco. It's the fucking taco. Okay. It's the ballpark food. It's not all things. It's the ballpark. Every, oh, every ballpark, shit. every ballpark food ever combined into a taco. Like what? What the fucking fuck? See, I would rather just eat the cheeseburger quesadilla. I'm just throwing yeah. it out because yeah, these are your people. people. These are your people. These are your royals, man. These are my. These are my people. These are the. So. These, Hey, they're singing the song of my heart. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, my thing like, is, we could have just left it at cheeseburger quesadilla and a hot dog. You could, they could have, but did they, did they, they stop did there? Did no, they, stop they there? didn't because no. what's KC known for, Jay? They're fucking barbecue. barbecue. So yeah. we're throwing fucking brisket on this bitch to make it go oh, one dude. extra step. Yep. And then, and don't forget the Cracker Jack with sriracha fucking sauce and all that shit. 
816 is our signature sauce with a hit of spice that is balanced with sweetness to develop complex layers of flavor. It reminds me that that sounds, sounds like, like Memphis tea. tea. I, I, it's, that, that's incredible. Dude, so no, it's not. No, it's, it's scary. It's like it's it's like a sign of the apocalypse, dude. Yeah. So the last news I have before we get into the roadhouse. Whoa, 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 I know you guys. Well, what else we got? Oh, do that now. Do it now. I completely it swept over my head. Do it now. So, so yeah, this because this shit happened like what, like two days ago? Yeah, this is yeah. this is one hundred percent fucking like just. And it was a, it was a big deal. It was a big fucking deal. Dude. So, I work in IT. I run a service desk. That's that's what I do. Um, and there was a huge fucking tech takedown due to a fucking software update. Now, before I go into the exact details of said issue, I'm going to just say the number one rule of IT is never update your software on a fucking Friday. <laughs> it's always the Friday updates that fuck shit up. So should CrowdStrike you, pushes out. You also like test it before you like, well, <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. Here's the thing. So there is QA testing with any updates and patches or fixes um and with that you know it's a very small control group so things do sometimes get overlooked nothing this fucking big so Ca crowdstrike who's a giant cybersecurity provider had released an update late thursday going into friday to a uh, patch to their software bunch of computers globally with corporations, I mean, Starbucks, McDonald's, fucking Microsoft, bunch of big fucking companies were down. Like, Star uh, Airlines. Airlines were writing paper tickets. Yeah, boarding so passes. So yep. fucking flights. McDonald's and Starbucks were having to take orders with a fucking pen and paper. Oh, man. The horror. <laughs> the fucking horror. Yeah. Right? Now... Right? This is where this is where my argument and and uh, D, you're gonna love this argument because here's the thing. You know what users weren't affected within the IT infrastructure? Apple, Mac, Mac and Linux users. So CrowdStrike, some of their some of their um, customers use Windows environments. Some host their stuff on Mac servers or Linux servers. Mm -hmm. The only side of their comp of their business that got affected was the fucking Windows users. Mm -hmm. And this was a this was an accident on the good guy side. Imagine yeah. if this had been like a a, now, a hacking like a, now, was you know the, I mean? now was this a mistake that was made by a person who put the wrong coding? Um, what, so what could that from everything this? I've done research-wise since Friday, it wasn't. It was 100% bad software. It was they, software. they didn't properly vet the software or they didn't use a big enough control group to yep. make sure the software was going to work. And then they rolled so it out. So a lot of companies... A lot of companies will <laughs> produce cut corners. Software. They'll cut they, corners. It's called cutting corners. Well, call it what it is, dude. Cutting they corners. cut corners, but it's control groups. So they'll do they'll do tests of their software. They'll do QA tests where it's so in this case, since it's Windows, Mac, and Linux, they're gonna test it on all three platforms in a very small control group of 10 to 15 computers so to make sure nothing goes wrong. Doesn't sound like they did that. But when you're, when you're looking at a company like CrowdStrike, who is a huge cybersecurity provider for major corporations, airlines, all these other companies, entire states, entire, entire states. fucking states. Eight. Yeah, no. And, and the thing is when you're looking at, you've got that big of a user base of your product. 10 to 15 computers in each environment isn't a proper control group. Not even close. So a little bit of background on the CEO of CrowdStrike. The CEO, George uh, Kurtz, used to be the CEO of McAfee, 
Oh, really? And you want to know when his tenure at McAfee ended? There was a big incident like this, similar incident with McAfee in the early 2000s. Or mid really? Around like 2010, 2014. So oh, is this a case of his? Is this a case of history repeating itself? That's kind of what my. Hey, it's only, hey, it's, only to the, it's only to the detriment of our national fucking security. Yeah. Like uh, this, this guy, this guy should, this guy should fucking bring back fucking Harakiri, dude. So yeah, like, I mean, bring some honor back to the goddamn job of CEO and like just fucking like, you know, commit seppuku, dude. Like fucking seriously, like it, it's our goddamn country, dude. See, and like they're they're selling us out like it, fucking piece by piece. And when shit like this happens, but, yeah, it fucked the whole world up. It fucked the whole world and up. And that's the thing. The worst part is, we we say it fucked the whole world up. It literally fucked the whole world up because not only were airlines and having to write handwritten boarding passes, there were flights completely fucking grounded because the computers in the planes. Yeah. We're using all this fucking software. I'd also like to add in too blue that blue screen of death doesn't play, dude. Blue yeah, screen what, of death and play. I want to. I want to no. touch on something real quick before before you, John. I'm gonna I'm gonna go into another thing. So Friday, late Friday, they released a workaround. Me and the guys at work, when we read the fucking workaround, we all fucking busted our asses laughing. I was gonna because say, the workaround what? was boot into safe mode and delete the system thirty two fucking file. System 32 is the file that has everything that tells Windows how to be Windows. So, so Did that so, delete that fucking file, you dumbass. So, so CrowdStrike is the their workaround is to remove the DNA of the infrastructure, pretty much. So, what a lot of companies are having to do, and I've got buddies that work for some of the airlines and stuff, they're having to go through it manually fucking re-image every fucking computer i've got mm. buddies that haven't been off work since fucking 5 a.m on friday morning i believe it I because believe it. there's just everybody's running around trying to get all these machines re-imaged to have everything business as usual tomorrow morning on monday Jesus when the Christ. business week starts imagine Jesus imagine Christ. imagine if this had been an actual attack this happened from yeah. like the good guy side yeah, this is what happens when this is what happens when you let corporations run rampant, and you don't hold their fucking the the shareholders and the goddamn CEOs and CFOs and all the other fucking fuckheads at the top accountable. Yeah, okay. and right. Do I need to remind anybody about the fucking Sackler family that created the goddamn opioid epidemic that is still ravaging our country like to this day? Yeah, they're still alive. They're not in jail. Okay, just yeah. just letting everybody know. Just reminding everybody. Yeah, this I is also what happens with corporate fuckery. Yeah, this I also corporate fuckery, and it, it's our fucking national security at risk. Yeah, like, yeah. That's fucking corporate fuckery. Yeah. I also want right. to add in too. So my wife, she she works at a at a crematory. That's what it's called, right, baby? A crematory. Crematorium. That's a crematorium. crematorium. Yeah. Uh, so she was explaining to me that that even her systems were down, and it's it's essential. Death death is an you know, essential. Like 9 11, 9 11 response oh. systems were down in several places. Yeah. many many places. Yeah. People, de people, one hundred percent died yesterday because of sh because of this shit. Yeah, yeah. my uh, my city. They actually on Facebook people died. Uh, the Greensboro Police Department on Facebook yesterday posted yesterday morning when everybody was freaking out because it was still early on or Friday morning because it was still early mm -hmm. on in the incident because it was being reported on national TV that nine one one systems were down globally, nationally, yeah. and. Our department was like, "Hey, our shit still works. If you have an emergency, call nine one one." Which okay. is good. Like, luckily, luckily, yeah. our PD still was able to receive. Fuck you know, yeah, patch was still able to receive calls, shit like that, because this is a huge fucking problem. And honestly, not, this is not a small. Honestly, deal. the oh, FTC, the FTC mm -hmm. needs to fucking do a deep dive into this company at this point because of the impact this fucking outage caused. So. Let's go back to, let's go back to Y two K. Let's go back. To, let's go back to why we still do fucking like land navigation in the army. Yeah, like why? Why, like, GPS. why, well, why do you need? Why, why do you do land navigation in the army? Well, because I'm not sure about you, Jay, but our fucking GPS has never fucking worked properly. It's 2020. Um, it's 2024. Why would I ever need to fucking use a map and a compass? 
Well, guess what, motherfucker? If all the fucking bullshit goes down, you got fucking nothing. Do you know how to? You better know how to read the fucking map. You better know how to fucking read a goddamn map, and you better have the right goddamn fucking one for fucking the area you're in. I mean, and that's that's the thing. Like, it's just it's this really proved the the from a global perspective, even how dependent the 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 world. It's, not it's, just it's, our nation, the world, because it wasn't it's, just the U.S. affected. There were global companies affected, and it proved how dependent everybody is on fucking technology. That's correct, and it, and it gets real scary real quick when you realize fucking you got a fucking busted leg in a ravine, and nine one one ain't fucking answering. And this fucking, is, like, but see, because of a this fucking, is because of a fucking IT failure. This is another reason why I always say, being an IT professional. Like I've, I've tried to get rid of pen and paper as much as I can in my fucking day-to-day operations because I work in it, you know, sometimes it's easier, but I still have notebooks and I'll jot down quick notes. And like when I'm in a meeting and I'm being handed tasks, I'm jotting them down on paper, but then I'm also storing them in a notes application on my phone, my computer, stuff like that. I have what's called a redundancy backup system. Pen and paper is part of that redundancy. Every single phone number saved in my fucking phone is written down in a fucking notebook also. There you go. Fuck yeah. Every image I have in my photos app on my phone, my Mac, is backed up to a fucking hard drive. I'm not... I'm one of those people where I will tell you redundancy, redundancy, redundancy when it comes to anything. You want to make sure there's no single point of failure and that you have redundancies in place for situations like this. What did you say? No no single point of failure? No single, no point, single of point of failure. That was a fucking single point of failure that cascaded and cascaded and cascaded. Like... Because a lot of these companies didn't have the redundancies in place to make sure that if this one thing went down, they were still able to operate business as usual. That's a but. That, that's like how many how many layers and different groups of people got lazy for this to happen based on one failure that it, it cascaded that bad. How many people got fucking lazy? And that's where you know I feel bad for for my fellow IT professionals for my buddies that work in the field that are getting with this because my company, we didn't get fucking hit. We had our, our Microsoft products went down late Thursday for maybe an hour and a half, but that's where I will give, a, I will give, <laughs> I will give a huge props to fucking Microsoft because Microsoft was partially affected by this fucking issue. Well, they rec- well, they recognized the it real quick. It happened. Microsoft had fucking redundancies in place to rectify the fucking problem and fix it quickly. Proper planning prevents piss poor performance. Proper planning prevents piss poor performance. Proper planning prevents piss poor performance. You need to Ooh. say it louder, Jay. You need to say it louder. <laughs> say what you can, Artua. Say what you can. And while you and while we have uh, Microsoft coming out of our mouths, uh, Bethesda oh, has it. unionized. They did. I saw but, that. I Bethesda, saw that. It, Tell us a little bit about it, John. Bethesda is officially the first Microsoft game studio to fully unionize. There have been layoffs like crazy at Bethesda at Microsoft, and I just think that they got tired of it. Um, the union was confirmed after 241 developers either signed a union authorization card or indicated that they wanted uni- unionization via an online portal. Uh, it follows Bethesda Game Studios Montreal's unionization in late June as well, and the unionization of roughly 300 quality assurance workers within Z- Zenimax, which is Bethesda's parent company. Uh, we, a major developer, we, a major of developers at Bethesda Game Studios, Dallas, Rockville, and Austin are ecstatic to announce the formation of our union with CWA Union. Together as together as one, you're good. Bless you. Damn it. Right. Bless you. We'd, adv- we'd advocate for the betterment of every developer at BGS, setting the new standard for our industry. I, I've only been part of one union when I was younger. I was part of the Food Workers Union. I never really got into all the hubbub and all like the 
the major things about it because I didn't really understand it. I don't understand it now, but what I do understand uh, is that have this. Ever, have, you, have you ever celebrated Labor Day? Yeah, that's because of unions. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever Have you ever been paid overtime because you work past forty hours in a week? Yeah, that's yeah. because of unions. That's because of unions. Have you ever Have you ever worked eight hours a day for five days a week and no more, no less? Yeah. Yep. Because of unions. Well, actually, I only work seven and a half hour days. See, they, oh yeah, because you get a lunch. That's because of unions, and you get breaks. Well, you get okay. breaks because of, you're mandated. There's a federal there's a federal minimum wage, regardless of how fucking low yeah. it is, and it needs to be raised. It's all because of unions. Well, unions. Yeah, I mean, that shit. I'm definitely on the minimum wage needs to be raised because the minimum wage oh, has yeah. been the same since I turned fucking eighteen. Yeah, it was like 2009, I think. 2009, 2008, 2009, seven, something like that. It was so the last time they yeah, raised. it was like six or seven. Somewhere in it's there like was the last time we got fucking like, increase on minimum wage. It's like seven and a quarter. It's still seven and a quarter. It's fucking bullshit. You can't fucking do min- – if, if you work – the idea of minimum wage is if you work 40 hours, you can afford to live as one person. If you All work right. 40 hours at a minimum wage. And, like, show me anywhere in the country – if you work a 40 hour week at seven and a quarter where you can live aside from like not underneath a bridge, cause you'll be under a bridge. I was going to say under a bridge. That's where you can live. Yeah. yeah. In your car. Uh, so car. if, if it, you can it, afford a car, you can't really afford a car on that. I mean, fuck like you were like, you're working a whole day just to fill your fucking gas tank. Right. Yeah. Like, right. Right. One day of work is a gas tank. Yep. Like, all right. Well, I mean, and don't get me started on fucking interest rates and shit right now. That's a whole fucking rabbit hole we can go down. Fuck um, corporations. And I don't think we've got enough time left in this episode to fucking look. Oh, yeah. To fucking go down there. <laughs> I, all right. <laughs> but borrow that one for next week and we'll just go on a whole rant about fucking interest whole, rates next week. We'll do a whole fucking, we'll do a whole kit and caboodle about it. I like it. So stay tuned but, for DD214 After Dark later this week for the uh, uh right. interest rate rants. Uh, so Jay, you got to work a concert this week. I did. Holy we crap. Let's talk about it. I do want, I'm going to put, all right. Are you ready to hit that button? School uh, got covered. Here we go. Oh boy. Yeah. Wrong button. It's still a good one. Hold on. Well, Pilgrims, it's been a while. It's good to see you again. Your friendly neighborhood, Jay, been down a couple of trails since the last time we saw each other. Why don't you come belly up here to this here bar? Share a beer with me. We'll talk some we'll talk some shit. And maybe we'll get into some here in a little while. All right. All right. So this week. I think John, remind me if I'm wrong, John. I think it was like two or three weeks ago. You said something about Beartooth, right? And you were like, "Hey, are you gonna are you gonna do that?" And I was like, "I'm not sure. I don't know yet." Yeah, I, I had brought up um, because one of my favorite bands right now they're called Never Tell, and it's their first tour, and they just got signed. Uh huh. Um, they just got signed, and they're playing with Boundaries, Currents, and Beartooth. And Beartooth is a pretty big band right now. Were they uh, Were they at this show? Never tell. Yeah, they should have been the opening band. They were okay then. Okay, yeah. yeah. All right then. Yeah. So I got to see. I got to see Never Tell too. How about that? How about that? Yeah. So they, I I didn't know if I was going to work it. I knew it was going to be at the Midland where I work uh, occasionally. I got a call. I think on Sunday or Monday. It was like right after the podcast, or it was like the next day, last week. And they're like, "Can you?" Like they they needed they, they put a call out for they needed extra people on the barricade. Oh shit! So I was like, oh, well, fuck! I ain't doing anything. I ain't doing anything that night. Let's fucking like YOLO that shit, right? So I do my regular Tuesday thing, and that night I went down to the Midland, and I was on the barricade, and <laughs> this honestly, John, like no shit, this was probably one of the most fun shows I've ever done at the Midland. And it was unique. It was unique in that once, like, the crowd started moving in and, like, started getting going, um, 
I've never seen crowd surfing at the Midland. And this, this show had a lot of crowd surfing and they were basically, we were instructed, like, get like, if, they, if, if they're crowd surfing, get them over the barricade and then get them off to the sides. Right. Mm. So I was playing catch and release, you know, with like, with a lot of people from the crowd. Right. Like the whole, like pretty much the whole time. Uh, Never tell was actually pretty good. I like never tell. I think I want to say I like the second band, whoever they were. I, I don't remember. Ba- the ba- boundaries. Now, were they the second one? Boundaries. Yep. Boundaries was it. the second band. The current was like, the third. Probably like, what was the name of the third one? Uh, currents. All, all of them were good. All of the openers were good. Um, honestly, I probably liked the second band the best. Um, and mm. that, includes, that includes Bear Tooth. That includes Bear Tooth. I saw this crazy video from that night that they put in their stories and okay. it was like a crazy, I was trying to look for you too, but it was so dark, but the, apparently towards the end of the show, they did, there was like a crazy, like they were like jumping, everyone was jumping in the and it looked like a wave of yeah. water. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It's fun. It's fun to watch sometimes. It's very, very fun to watch sometimes. Um, I had a really good, I had a really good time doing this show. I had a really, like this one was, I, I worked for it. I worked for it. I got to work. I didn't go, didn't go, didn't make it to the gym that day. I got to work out that night. I got to fucking work out that night. Your, your boy, your boy, Jay was fucking carrying, carrying fucking, carrying some folks and, and being assisted, carrying some folks with some of my, some of my fellow uh, security, security guards. We, had, but everybody had a good time. Everybody stayed safe. Um, for some of you, for some of you bigger boys and girls, okay, um, your crowd serving days, you might want to think about them being not kind of over, okay? Like when you've got fucking fat boy, fat boy slim and fucking fat sweaty Betty, you know what I mean? Like trying to fucking crowd surf, like it, it doesn't just fuck us up, it fuck the crowd up, okay? Just just throwing it out there. You know what? And it's not e- and it's not even a shame either. It's like it's a safety issue to be it honest. Kind of is. It kind of is because like. The one thing that the, the the crowd did really good, they weren't they weren't doing like the shove thing where like like they like people can catch air. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they weren't they weren't throwing them over the barricade. They were like we like they were handing them to us basically. Like the crowd was handing them to us, which is like good job, Kansas City. Fuck like fucking eight. Hold on. Hold on. I gotta I always gotta give mad props to my fucking good job, Kansas City. Thank you. Thank you. Fucking saving my back, saving my goddamn fucking like neck and like all the other goddamn things that get fucked up. Like, because crowd serving can be dangerous. So just be careful when you do it. But no, everybody had a good time. I had one of the most beautiful moments I've ever, ever, ever fucking had at a concert, John. You want to hear about it? No shit. Yeah. It ass. There, there was a couple, but this one was was like the this was like the fucking like the 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 the, the rose that grew from like concrete, right? Like the precious, right? <clears throat> there was this little three three year old girl, and I know that because they had a sign. And when Beartooth, in between uh, the 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 last person and and Beartooth, the last band and Beartooth, uh, her like dad and mom like worked their way like closer, and they put them put her up on on their uh, on their shoulders, and she had fucking she had you know some pink goddamn. Uh, ear protection you know and all that little tiny girl dude right tiny little thing well during the show during bear tooth set i had to go over and assist bringing bringing a, you know a person or two out of out of the you know from over the barricade and as i was walking back to my spot i see this this little girl she like locks on to me like three-year-olds kind of do like they when they see movement they start they kind of latch on you know what i mean yeah i went back to my spot and she was still staring at me and i just went and she fucking waved back and like, like in all that fucking madness and shit, like surrounding her, dude, like she was paying attention. Like three, three year olds, like out, out of the mouth of babes comes wisdom. It's kind of interesting too. Cause like she knows you're a security guard. She knows that it, if, if safety needs to be I had, I wouldn't necessarily say she at three years old that she was aware of something like that. No, it's it's a big party, dude. Like they don't. Yeah, I wouldn't say at three. That's not at yeah, not at three. At three, she just saw somebody that looked friendly. Surprisingly, I'm not sure if you've seen Jimmy. <laughs> um, <laughs> but she just saw somebody that looked friendly and was like, "They're waving at me, so I'm gonna wave back." 
That's basically, I, I, that's kind of like, and it, you know, there's a lot of times I do concerts, you know, I think about my kids, I think about, you know, like life experiences and stuff. When, when some of the, uh, the singers that talk about some of their struggles, uh, they, they do a lot of the, the performances I see are epic. They're fucking awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm a very, very fortunate man to, uh, to be in the line of work that I do. And not just, not just because I get to do it, but because I enjoy it. I do, I do enjoy the work that I do. I really do. And I get a kick out of it and stuff like that doesn't happen very. Another, another thing you'll like John that I saw was a full grown dude. And this was okay. This was okay. This I was okay with a full grown dude had everybody get him up and a kid about probably like somewhere between 10 and 12, maybe. Yeah. Ish. Like he'd be small for 12, but like big for nine. You know what I mean? Yeah. Stood up, stood up on his fucking, on this grown dude's abs and they crowd surf them together during one of, I don't, I don't think that was Beartooth though. It was like, I think it was one of the earlier ones. No shit. That's cool. And he stood, he like surfboard, he like surfboard. <laughs> and I, I pulled, I pulled the kid down while my, uh, my, my partner is freaking got, got the other dude, but I got, I pulled the kid down. But like that was that was cool seeing them do that. Like that was like I was, I was like fuck yeah. <laughs> like I'm like like I'm the security guard. I was getting into it. You know what I mean? I was like yeah. Those um like, those group of bands right now, like those specific four, they're very known for being well, especially Bear Tooth. They're more of like a positive. They were they're very into the, they're very they're in the very positive out stuff of, with with the band. Them, so it's really cool. All of them were, and I I, I totally picked up on that vibe. The crowd was cool. Everybody was cool. Uh, didn't have, didn't, again, no problems, bro. No, like, I, Jay, Jay got a workout catching fucking fat, sweaty Betty, you know, like, and see somebody going up, be like, hey, there she blows, you know, and we go fucking catch him. And then, like, I had a good time. I had a fucking good time. Yeah. And, and you know what's fucked up about, you know what's fucked up about all that, too, man? How, um, the the you fucked up thing about there. yeah the whole fucked up thing about that is that things like you go to a concert like that right and things are so calm and then you hear about things that happened like with that one festival a couple of years ago which one the blue ridge uh football fuck fest uh the one was it travis yeah. scott what happened remind remind me brother lighten us something it was something um Something, something dark said. <laughs> Travis Scott Festival. I love you, Joe. <laughs> Astro World. It happened to Astro World a couple years ago. There was like I a bunch of people that died. Yeah, and we talked about that too. I do have a clip here from that show, Jay. This is what no I was talking about. Show it. Let me see. Let me see. I want to see. I want to see. I want to see. Can you bl- please blow that up? I love you, but please blow. That I don't up. think I could. You can't. Oh, with yes, you YouTube, can. it's gonna cut it off. <laughs> Walked in there. I would be all the way at the bottom. I would be all the way at the bottom underneath where KC says. Where it says KC. Oh, like down here? Yep. Interesting. I was, I was all the way. I was fucking uh, stage left, fucking house right. All so, the way. I was all the way like stage, stage fucking left, house right. So I guess another thing we've got to discuss. When are we going to do all three of us in one place at one time. Good, ooh, good question. Ooh. Because we've now done John and Jay and Joe and Jay, but we've never done the three Jays. No, we have not. And I think I have a perfect place for that. Somewhere in fucking Tennessee. Tennessee. Are you going to Tennessee soon? No, but <laughs> hear, me, hear me out. Hear, hear, hear Mr. Land Navigation fucking out. From North Carolina to Tennessee, from New Jersey to Tennessee, from Kansas City to Tennessee. It's about the same fucking distance. About the same. And fucking, um, not Memphis. Uh, what's got- Damn, Knoxville. you re- you really thought about this. Knoxville. Knoxville is like under- Man. Have you been there? I've got buddies that live there. I've been there. I'm not a big fan of Knoxville. What do you want, Memphis? I, I would say- I'm not a big fan of Nashville, Tennessee. I'm not a big fan of Nashville. I would say chat. Chattanooga, Chattanooga, because they've got a lot of shit to fucking do, and they're, they're cool. and they're cool. 
Yeah. They're cool. John. Chatt- yeah. Chattanooga. Now, Chatt- granted, we do Chattanooga. Y'all have to get hotels. Well, yeah. Me, I've got somebody I can stay with for free. <laughs> I, that, that's no sweat off my sack, dude. That is no sweat <laughs> off my fucking sack, dude. I don't give a shit. But no, I mean, if we're going to do a DD214 takes over Chattanooga, Tennessee, what we need to do is get, do, I would say more like Pigeon Forge or like the mountains. And Ooh. we get a cabin together. We all go in together on a cabin. Just have to make sure they have good internet. <laughs> Just have to make sure they have good internet. Those areas now have actual fucking internet. Yeah, I know. Well, I, know, well, I know. I'm just saying it's got. It, but we we have to be able to stream. We just have Jay, to be able to stream. We have my MacBook, my fucking phone. We do the same setup we did when we fucking did KC. Okay. We got hotspots. iPhones have hotspots too. So we've got. This. Wait, 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 I'm sorry. What were we just talking about? What happened Friday? My bad. I'll shut the fuck up. My bad. Okay. They don't have. They, they don't have. They don't have. Shit. <laughs> I'm going to repeat myself. Mac Brick, not Windows computer, you fucked hard. Yeah, until, until until the until the fucking bullshit happens to a Mac, right? Right. Like because I because I totally have faith in that corporation over the fucking other asshole. Well, right. I can go back on one hand and count how many times Mac's been down. He's right, you know. He's actually right. <laughs> That's the thing. Holding my tongue. You want to know something, Jay? Would we're ben- talking about a company that's been around since the '70s, and it's Goose- funny, too. and it's funny too, because because and and Squilini, back me up here. Do you think Jay, with him, you know, with the way that he does the the podcast with us, would he benefit you having a Mac? Honestly, I I about fucking gifted him my MacBook. Oh <laughs> shit. You might need to, you might need to. I'm I'm starting to get a little squirrely with my laptop. I was actually thinking about that in the shower. I'm like I'm like if your laptop crashed today, what the fuck would you even get? You'd have to call fucking John and Joe and be like, "I need help." <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's like first I can't off, go I, first I can't off, go don't call John, call Joe. Yeah, no. it's like, I can't, I can't, I don't call me. I can't afford I can't afford to go to fucking Best Buy and like read up with had to have me but his computer so so don't don't go to jail. I can't, I can't I can't afford I can't afford to go drop fucking a fucking grand on a fucking on a on a goddamn PC right now, dude. You like, can't even trust me to press the right button. All right, this uh-huh. is this is where we are. That's a, long, that's a long-standing thing. So yeah, but Here's all right. So thing. at that point, if it gets to that point, Jay, where your fucking computer craps out, I will send you a fucking computer and a fucking monitor. All you have to buy is a cheap ass desk. I already got that. I already, I already got that. Cause I've got I've got my Mac Mini, I've got my MacBook. Both of them are the exact same year model running the same fucking so, um hardware. So I could send you my Mac Mini and fucking two monitors and just use my fucking MacBook. Would I be able to play on John's Red Dead server on that? No. Oh fuck me. That's where you <laughs> need Windows. Jay wants to play cat wagon. Yeah, I want to play. <laughs> that's what you need, need the uh, the software, the the operating system that constantly has fucking problems. Right. Okay. So uh, we'll get we'll get it, we'll get it figured out. We'll get it figured out one of these days. We will. We will. But yeah, we need to definitely plan something like that. That's funny. You know, that's John funny. and his wife, me and I my wife, I've, and then you. I've dri- I've, dri- I've stayed in I've stayed in Knoxville. Had a good night there. That was over ten years ago, though. And I've driven through, basically or horizontally driven through Tennessee. Beautiful fucking country, like amazing Appalachia, I, like just amazing. I could, I would love I to do, that. I would love to do Chatt- Chattanooga. Sounds fun. That's why I keep I'm, saying the next time you go to West I'm Virginia, foreign. you might have to take a little bit of a detour, detour. but you're going to have to come to fucking North Carolina and visit me and my stomping grounds. And when you do that, fucking air mattress ready. I'll have the smoker ready. I'll give you some fucking Joe barbecue. That I would love. I, that, I, 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 that's what I want. We'll be outside for a couple hours early as shit, starting drinking. While I'll be drinking with, going. I'll be drinking with you guys too. But you might have to get John down for that shit. Yet, like, if like, you're going to do like, this, let's just do it in NC. Let's do it at my place. I get the smoker going. That we could do too. Do you, have a big, do you have a big do you have a big backyard that I could build like a house tent? No. 
damn. I do. But I've got <laughs> I do. Enough, I've got enough, <laughs> big enough. mattresses and I can spread the wealth between you and your wife and fucking <laughs> Dude, all I need is a fucking bathtub, bro. It, it's not like it would be the it wouldn't be the first fucking time I've slept in one. Okay. So, like, <laughs> unfortunately, in the current place I live, we have a one and a half bath, and the bathtub is where I take my showers. Which is so you don't sleep in it. No, but you could as long as it's fucking. I mean, dry. you could. I'm as not saying you could. Because the thing is, if you ask my wife, she has a picture of me passed out drunk in our bathtub. <laughs> I need I that it. as a I need that as a podcast cover. No. Oh. 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 Nope. Nope. Amy, if, Amy, if you can hear me, Amy, if you can hear me, get the picture of Joe passed out in the bathtub. Me this is the one it. thing I'm glad me she doesn't John fucking it. listen to is this podcast. I'm gonna text her. I have her on Messenger. I'm gonna text her. <laughs> Fuck this fucker. I have your wife on. I have your wife as a Facebook friend. That she added you and you <laughs> added her back on fucking Facebook. God damn it. You're God J- 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 introducing her to my friends. <laughs> Jay J- might be Jay might be primitive in his technology, but he does know how to use it. I absolutely I like I'm like the fucking orcs, dude. <laughs> like I'm like a fucking orc, dude. Like, oh, like man. I would never be able to create it. I would never be able to create it, but I will exploit the fuck out of it, right? Like <laughs> oh man. Oh, he's he, he's gonna ask. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you might as you might as well just save yourself the trouble. <laughs> Want to see it? <laughs> He's gonna do it. I love it. Yeah, and then when he comes back, we'll we'll finish off with uh, with Generation Kill, and then into our final thought. Absolutely, which would be I mean, perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we're about to get the answer. Hey, real quick, let me go. I need to freaking relieve myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll yep. be right back. What'd you say, Joe? What'd you oh. say? She just walked in. Can she hear me? He wants you to send the picture of me passed out in the bathtub. bathtub. They're going to use that as a podcast cover. I don't know if I still have it. You have to look. Please look. Please look. I love you. Please if look. You get back in the group chat with Calvin and Shelby. It's probably there. Okay. I'll back and look, man. Thank you, Amy. I love you. Because he was all like, you know, I've got her on Facebook. I can just message her and ask for this. <laughs> so I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to call her into the fucking office while we're live. So I hide in the internet. Smart man. <laughs> Smart man. Like, don't. don't... The ginger. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, it's Garfield. Smart man. Don't argue with Jay. Oh, man. I just so... don't feed him lasagna, so. <laughs> right? Right? Uh, is his name Garfield? No, it's Tigger. I'll be right back, John. Tigger's, t- Tigger's just as good. And yeah, no, I mean. It's... There's times where, like, my buddy that also lives in KC outside of Jay, uh, Mike, he, um, first time after we got him, he was like, there was one conversation. We're on the phone talking and shit, bullshitting. And he's like, you know, do you just ever walk around your place saying, my Tigger? Oh, shit. <laughs> There's a guy in my area. Uh, I, I'm really thinking about being an asshole to my landlord and just mm-hmm. going for the, going, uh, oh, fuck, I'm drawing a blank right now. What's it called? Um, a, hel- a helper dog, a helper pet. A service dog. A service dog. Ah, Jesus Christ. I just, I had a big brain fart. If I could uh, reach through the fucking camera and smack you right now, John. I know. I'm not doing too good. It, it's been, it's, I, I think I've slept more this week than I ever have. But I will tell you, I wouldn't be smacking you with my hand. Oh, Jesus. No, I have. Smack you with my micro penis. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, th- I'm re- really contemplating being an asshole to my landlord and being like, hey, well. I could uh, I, I could get the service pets so but, you but it's can go to online point. and false and get fucking ESD paperwork emotional support animal paperwork without fucking doing anything and then boom under ADA laws they can't say shit yeah that's I've true. got all three of our cats registered as emotional support animals so that's that what way I, want. I want a cat I want a cat so bad. <laughs> 
I want a cat so fucking bad. But uh, but yeah, so we're gonna end today's show on an interesting note. Uh during <laughs> during the great rapture of 2024 this past week, um, you know, we talked <laughs> You know, we had we lost Richard Simmons, Dr. Ruth, uh, and then there were so many other people that died continuing on this week. But there was one that wasn't mentioned last week. Uh, I'll put up the footage. Jay, you want to take pick it yeah, up? Yeah, yeah. Let me. I'm looking up something real quick, just so that I can um, read it when I get ready to. There we go. Okay, so I got that up. Okay, so um, there's a guy by the name of Evan Wright, and for those of you who are familiar with the uh, the book and the HBO miniseries called uh, Generation Kill, okay, Evan Wright, Evan Wright was the reporter. Okay, he was he, he worked, at the time he worked for Rolling Stone, the time he worked for Rolling Stone, and he was the reporter, and Unfortunately and sadly, uh, he passed away um, the Friday before our last show, and the news hadn't really completely broke by the time we went live last Sunday, so we were kind of unaware, and then we kind of found out like after, uh, basically after we had already gone live. So we wanted to acknowledge that Evan Wright <clears throat> had passed away. He's the writer of the book Generation Kill, which eventually became the HBO miniseries, uh, sadly he, he did take his own life. Um, and it, it, it kind of hurts, uh, to know that. And, um, the Lieutenant Fick, uh, in, in the, in the show, in the book, uh, Nate Fick, who also wrote a, he, he Nate Fick also wrote a book, um, based on his experiences during that, that time during the initial invasion, invasion of Iraq, uh, with force recon, um, Nate Fick wrote something, uh, and he posted it. And it says, uh, a few days before the invasion of Iraq in 2003, my commanding officer told me that a journalist from Rolling Stone would be riding with my platoon. I was upset. At best, he would be a distraction. At worst, a threat. After our first close quarters firefight, I found Evan Wright counting bullet holes in the door next to his seat. He could have left at any time, gone back to Kuwait to check into a nice hotel and file his story, but he didn't. Instead, he spent many nights at the forward edge of the entire U.S. invasion. So many memories. Evan and I crouched yeah. behind a tire as AK rounds snapped past, talking about the relative the relativity of safety. <clears throat> Evan running in a crazy zigzag pattern, which you'll probably remember from the show, uh, from one covered spot to another under sniper fire while I yelled at him to just run straight, god damn it. Learning <laughs> learning on a learning on a cold desert night that Ev, that Evan's bulging duffel didn't contain a warm jacket, only cartons of marble reds he thought he could trade for whatever he'd need. <laughs> Yo. he wrote a series of articles about our platoon in rolling stone they won the national they won the national magazine award in 2004 the top prize the top prize in magazine reporting he turned them into a book and then and then an hbo series generation kill evan took his own life this weekend he leaves behind a wife and three young kids i knew evan as a good and gentle guy in a place that was neither good nor gentle he wasn't a marine but many of us who spent march and april 2003 alongside him have thought of Evan for the past two decades as one of us rest in peace, brother. So there you go. Hoorah. That's, I mean, he might not have been a Marine, yeah. but definitely the way that was written right there that you just read Jay uh -huh. from one of the guys that was there with him. He was definitely an honorary Marine. Oh yeah, he was there. They so gave him talking, the fucking was, honorary title of Marine. He was, he was there. He was there. He dealt with the shit. He mm -hmm. sucked it the fuck up for being a journalist, which is a whole fucking different. A whole other. That's what, that's kind of you know like like when you see the documentary Restrepo, it's the same shit. Oh yeah, like, Restrepo. You know, you know, Restrepo is shout yeah. out. They were that's how that's how we hear a lot of these stories. A lot of us have experienced things similar similar in nature or similar in magnitude uh, at times. But a lot of the, a lot of the stories they go untold. They just go they, they get they get stored away up here. They don't get talked about yeah. a lot. It's stuff. That's why we have journalists in place. Sometimes it's why we do combat correspondence and stuff like mm -hmm. that. It's so it's so that the it's so that the world can see exactly how it is. So, think, like, shout out to Evan Wright. 
Yeah. Rest we're in peace. Put him, uh, I, we're putting him on the DD214 Network Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. Hall of fucking fame. Hall of Fame. Honorary yes. member of the Marine Corps. Honorary veteran. Yep. Honorary combat veteran. It's, you know, and you, and you got, I, gone, but never been, forgotten. A lot of people fucking combined. <laughs> like, yeah. And you guys and, know me. I have a lot of respect for like journalists and what they do. It's, you know, well, it's some of them really just want to get the story out. It's important yeah. for demo- I mean, it's important for a democracy to have so, re- like truthful, fucking honest reporting. Yeah. If so, you don't have that, if you don't have that, you don't have the correct information. Go ahead, Joe. Being a content creator and doing, you know, doing what we do and doing a little bit more, you know, John and me both do a little bit more on the content creation and yeah. journalistic side of things than you, Jay. But you know, it, it brings reason. a whole other fucking. It, it's a whole nother perspective because honestly, if I didn't go in, I'd have never fucking gone and sat there and done what he fucking did. No, no, because why would you? Unless, unless you were in, unless you were in. Yeah. yeah. Why, why the fuck would you? But some, but there's people like him. And but there's people be, like him, go and which bet. are proper go war co- correspondents, not yeah. these pussy ass war correspondents like what you read off and were saying, yeah. you know, where he could have fucking gone back to Kuwait and fucking got himself a hotel room and yeah. fucking been perfectly safe. You know, who but else? he said, no, fuck this shit. I'm going to be out here in the suck with you guys. You know who else was a combat correspondent? Ernest fucking Hemingway. Yeah. You know what I mean, it's shit mm, like that goes all the way back to like WW1, dude. Okay. Yeah. This, this shit ain't nothing new. It's shit ain't but, nothing new. And the, and the people, and the people have a right to know, and the people have a right to know, but you got to find somebody, somebody with some fucking sack. And some fucking intestinal fortitude to do that, male or female. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? So exactly. Fuck so yeah. I guess I mean with that, we uh we segue into final thought. Yeah. Go for it, Joe. So yeah, I'm gonna definitely I that that entire fucking thing's got me motivated right now. Um and you know, we're for me personally, and this is you know, we talk about everybody has their times of the year that are tough, hard, you know. Usually holidays are really a big thing. Um, for me, this past Thursday was 10 years and one week since my dad passed away. Hmm. We call those um, anniversary in my therapy group. We call those anniversaries. Yep. Right. Yeah, it was it was an anniversary. Um, and this past week definitely was hard between that um, and a bunch of other things. And you know, we, we all have that moment where we, we need to reflect on the good, the bad, the ugly, but we definitely don't want anyone in our circle to succumb to the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm. If anybody's feeling down out there, they've got nothing left there's always the national suicide hotline. You can text or call 988 or dial and call 1-800-273-8255. That's 1-800-273-TALK. If you don't feel like talking to one of the people from the national suicide hotline, you can definitely reach out to one of the three of us, discord, Facebook. I mean, I've got, I don't have my Facebook locked down to where I can't receive messages from people. I don't know if you need to find me. I'm one of the admins of our Facebook page. I'm on the discord. We're there for you. We don't want anybody to succumb to the thoughts that there's nothing left or nothing worth continuing for. Those times happen. I have those times frequently. And then I sit and I look at everything I've accomplished in my life and even what I didn't accomplish. I look at the bad, I look at the good and I talk. I talk to the people I care about. I talk to the people I love so they know what I'm going through. And that that builds a healthy support system for all of us. So we don't want anyone to think there's no one out there that will listen out of the three of us, me, Jay, John, we've all been there. 
I'm sure of it. There's not a time it hasn't crossed our minds, but we've powered through. We've looked at what we do have in our lives. We've looked at what we could have done differently. We've looked at what we have done. And we think maybe, you know, we have more than what we think. So definitely, you know, reach out to one of us, the hotline, a battle buddy. If you're not one of those people feeling down and out, I know this week I texted one of my old buddies that I served with three, three combat tours just to check in. And, you know, just doing that check-in might be what saves that life. You might not have talked to him in 20 years, 10 years, five years, whatever it might be. But those those contacts can be a huge life altering situation where somebody might be on the brink and it saves that person because it shows that person there are still people out there that care. There's people out there that don't want them to take their life. The last thing I want, you know, is definitely to get a message from somebody saying, hey, X, Y, Z took their own life and then now I'm going to a funeral of somebody that I really care about or that I served with that was a close friend, comrade, brother in arms. So we definitely want everybody to feel appreciated, respected, and loved. Fucking beautifully said, man. Beautifully said. Fucking A. Well, guys... Thank you so much for coming by. This was actually a slamming episode. It was all it was emotional up and down. We did all right. We did all right today. We did all right. I like how we always give ourselves like a review at the end of the show too. It's like you know we did good. You did really good, guys. Hey, we don't. Hey, John, we don't. Hey, this isn't a freaking uh, reality TV fucking podcast. On a porn scale, this was a good nine and a half out of ten. We don't get, dude. We don't get thirty. We don't get thirty views, bro. Every now and then, it's very every now and, it, then. Every every now now and then. then. Every now and then, Rumble, Rumble, it's a whole it's a completely different conversation. Oh, I look at Rumble constantly to see how our views are doing over there, and they're fucking great. How are they? What do we get? Really good. Like, like how many? Uh, well, real quick, so we can end. This. Yeah, on, on an upbeat note, right? Very upbeat. Last DD 214 is at 14. That's 166 is at 14 views. And then uh, 165 is at 29 views. But there's raw views and unique views. So but then one, so like 164, we're at 90 views. Yeah. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. So three episodes ago, we're at 90 or four episodes ago now, we're at 90 views. Huh. Uh, but then we've got, Two episodes or three episodes was 29. Last week was 14. Nope. It's, I mean, Rumble, we've been hitting some marks. Episode 157, 95. Huh. Yeah. They, they, they like, they like us over the there. What are the titles of those? The ones that got all the views? Um, so the 95 view was Mother Lovers. That was Mother's oh, Day. Yeah. That was a good, yeah. Was, Every, everybody likes her Mother's Day. 90 episode. views was Fade Up Against Your Will. Oh, okay. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Never trust the fart is at 42. March these nuts, which was episode 148 to 75 views, which was four months ago. (laughs) I love how me and John like laugh at our own fucking jokes, dude. Like, like we don't we don't give a fuck, dude. Like so number 150, number 154, no help is coming. So I mean, we're we're doing our thing again. We're a niche market. We we do we, what are. we do. We are. Um, I, I never expected. We're definitely not for everybody. I never, I never, I never, never expected to get rich off of this, dude. Let me promise. Yeah, no, we're, we're, like, like, we're like we're like uh we're like Frito uh, hot sauce or something, you know, like we acquired taste. Yeah, like you, yeah, you you better already know what it is and already like it before you before you. We're know like it. we're like we're like the hot nut challenge. We're not for everybody. And some people might get the right. thought of us. I still haven't shit right. It's been over a year. I still have not shit right. Yeah, I know. Same here. Same here. Okay. Same here. Never again. We'll see you guys later. We love you. Salute.